What's up, guys? So, I played around with Chat GPT the past couple weeks. I had some interest in trying to create some code for a TradingView uh, bot to trade cryptocurrency. As you know, I like to mess around with bots like BitScout, Crypto Hopper. There's a couple others that I don't really do a lot of videos on, but I do play around with. So I thought this would be interesting. So uh, chat GPT can write code. Total newbie can pretty much go into chat GPT, you know, for instance, and say, Hey, just write me some pine script code that I can use in trading view that'll trade using the, the RSI indicator, the MACD Bollinger bands, and it'll spit something out. But, you know, I did notice it's not totally accurate all the time and you got to try to make sure the prompts that you ask it are very accurate and detailed or it won't give you the output that you're wanting. And I've seen this come up quite a bit on other videos I watched and uh, people talking about this. So that's the important thing here is just making sure you ask it specific things. They do got some examples on the website. You know, if your code's not working like you expected to, and you know how to kind of help Chat GPT figure out errors that it gave you. You know, it does say they trained this model using reinforcement learning from human feedback using the same methods as Instruct GPT, but with slight differences in the data collection. They do say there's some limitations, and it's hard to fix some of these issues from the reinforcement learning training. So I've heard, you know, it's a bit of a black box. I do talk about that later in the video, but let's go ahead and get into it. And you'll probably have a good laugh at my first attempt to try to generate some code and then paste it over in the trading view, run it as a strategy, you know, see if it gives me anything useful. So I wasn't totally successful on the first attempt, but you might find it interesting just like how I kind of proceeded to prompt chat GPT to try to get the best code from it. And I think I can take this code that I did generate and use it in the future to make it even better and just kind of tweak it, you know, a little bit here and there. So yeah, let's get into it. Thank you. So guys, here we have trading view up and then also have chat GPT. Here's some previous code that it was able to write dealing with RSI and Bolger bands. It was a strategy with risk management. And as you can see here, as you can see here, I was asking it a series of questions. It seemed to have trouble with Pine script version four and version five. I had to tell it, which is probably my fault to write the code in Pine script version five, which is what trading view, if you write a script, you go down here to Pine Editor if you're in the Trading View chart. Go down here to Pine Editor, click on that, and you can copy and paste this code right here. And then you can add it to the chart or you can publish the script. So I thought it'd be pretty simple. You know, I thought it would be to spend some time with this. And you can see all the code I tried to generate with this thing. I did lots and lots of prompts. I was just wanting to do like a simple RSI strategy using the Bollinger Bands just to try to identify the trend. Yeah, I give it the RSI periods, overbought at 70 RSI, oversold at 30 RSI, and then the uh, risk management, you know, to use like 1% of the capital of my 1% of your total capital per trade. And here it is, you know, where it calculates a position size buy and sell signals this one was doing with a moving average actually so when you had certain crossovers you'd have a buy signal or a sell signal it's, it's pretty simple and down here this is where it would actually plot this these buys and sells on the chart like you see the color blue color red you know color black for rsi and then buy and sell signals that's where it would be plotting like green and red. This did not work exactly like I thought it would. And like I said, I spent a lot of time, look at all this. I spent a lot of time going through the prompts, trying to get this to work. So I, in this episode, I wanted to revisit this and kind of type some more prompts in based on what I learned prompting it 
to try to make this code, you know, and I'm sure it's just gathering the code from its database and it's trying to put two and two together to generate something meaningful that will actually work. But I don't think it totally actually understands what it's generating. I don't, like I said, it's not like a conscious being that can interpret its actions or what it's actually doing. I think it's just pulling data from wherever and trying to make the most out of what it's telling you, you know, with the code. That's what it seems to be doing to me. So, like I said, <laughs> you know, you can approach this very cautiously. But anyway, let's play around with it and we'll see what we get. So, if I just start with a new chat, I'm going to just do away with this. So, this is a total new chat. You got the default and the legacy model. The legacy model was the previous version of chat GPT. We'll use the default model. It's optimized for speed, currently available to plus users. So this is like $20 a month, right? I'm not promoting it like an affiliate or anything. So let's just play around with it. Sorry for this mechanical keyboard. It might be a little loud. So let's just, let's just try something. Can you write me some Pine script. Let's go ahead and say version five code for trading view that will create buy and sell signals using an RSI indicator strategy on the one hour chart and use Bollinger bands to help identify the trends of the market. So I think that's it's specific enough to get it started. And after you get it started, you can kind of narrow down that what you're trying to generate. So here it goes. It's really fast. And I'll kind of show you how you can copy this, put it into Pine Script. I just want to make a short video on it so you can kind of see what I was doing here and what a lot of other people are actually doing. So you can see it actually generates the code. It's using the buy condition of 30 oversold and the sell condition of 70 overbought, which that's your standard RSI values. And see, it tells you what it did. In this code, we first define the RSI period and Bollinger Bands period and standard deviations as input variables that can be adjusted by the user. So we can adjust these, the red numbers here, and then it, you know, it defines the buy and sell conditions using the crossover and cross under functions for RSI value. That just means when, you know, the market crosses over, you know, a certain indicator or under a certain indicator, it's going to buy or sell. And then it's going to use the plot and here to actually plot, plot that on the chart. So let's just see if this even works, right? I know usually I'll get an error, an error the first time I try to copy this stuff usually. Hmm. Didn't seem to copy. Okay. So there it pasted. He's allowed to leave that last line on the end. So here it is. So now I'm going to go over here and hit add to chart. Let's even see if it works. So see, so here's an error, right? So it thought this code is correct but it says could not find function or function reference crossover so let's just say let's just copy this error and then we're gonna say i got the follow following error right and i'm just gonna put it in quotes and then enter and then it's gonna say i apologize for the error it looks like the crossover and cross under functions were added to pine script in version five so so you see there, I told it the first time to generate this in PineScript version five, but then it said, you know, however, TradingView recently made some changes to their platform. So why didn't it implement that in the first code that it wrote, you know, if it knew that in its database that TradingView recently made some changes? So it's those kind of things that I'm a little iffy about when I'm using it. But it'll probably eventually be able to nail this stuff down. So, you know, we'll see. So basically, it'll explain what it changed in the code. It'll say, in this updated code, we use the TA cross function to check for crossovers 
of the RSI value, blah, blah, blah. You know, 30 and 70 threshold, your standard RSI numbers there that people use for oversold, oversold and overbought. So it just says, I hope this resolves the issue you were facing. Let me know if you have any further questions. So let's copy it again. We're going to copy. I just want you to see how, how many times I had to do this the first time. So delete this old one, right? Let's just delete it. Then we're going to paste the new, the new code. Hopefully this works. And then we're going to hit add to chart. Okay. So that time it did add it to the chart, but it did not show any buy or sell signals, right? It only shows this RSI Bollinger band. So you have to play around with it a little bit to get it right. So I'm going to say the buy and sell signals are not showing up on the chart using the above code. And it'll just say, I apologize for the confusion. The issue might be due to the fact that the plot shape function is not getting the expected values for the buy condition and sell condition variables. To fix this, we can modify the buy condition and sell condition variables, the output value of one. So, you know, I mean, it really sounds like it knows what it's talking about. It's putting this stuff together, probably similar to how the language part maybe in our brain works and then it spits it out. But as you can see, it tends to generate a lot of errors that you have to go and debug it to try to figure out what it's trying to tell you. And the more specific you can be with what you're telling it with certain prompts, the better off you're going to be also. So let's say, let's do this. See if this works this time. Okay. So we're going to paste that. But I did notice like sometimes when I get it to do a code revision, it often puts things that originally changed that were causing errors. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Okay. So that time I added it to the chart, but all I did was add this Bollinger band. See, I had it actually showing me like buy and sell signals the other day. So definitely takes some playing around with. Let's see here. Let's ask it. Let's delete the Bollinger bands and only use RSI for the buy and sell signals. And see, it'll modify the code. It is really good at writing the code. I don't know if it kind of like understands code, kind of like we understand languages. Because, you know, our brain just puts language together so easily. So maybe it can think in code, you know, like that. It's really hard to say how it does that. And I think the people who created this, they call it like a little bit of a black box. Kind of like on an airplane where they don't know exactly what's going on. In that neural network, there's like a layer that kind of exists there. They're not totally sure, you know, how this stuff is kind of working. They know like the front end and the, you know, the back end or, but the in between, they don't really know everything, even though, you know, they designed it as still a machine learning platform. That's probably the most interesting part of it. So see there, it generated some buy signals. You see these on the bottom here, and if you were to look at it, you'll see they kind of correspond to where the market kind of see where it started to really go up. If you look at the four hour, you'll see, you see where it kind of started there, right there. So you can tweak this and you can keep tweaking it, turn it into something useful. But a lot of people have already created strategies, indicators, and the thing with indicators, you can overcomplicate things by using too many indicators. So it's probably good to just use two or three at a time and no more than that, because that's really all you need. RSI is really powerful one, MACD, Bollinger Bands, you know, the ones that people use mostly to determine the market. So. Just keep that in mind. I just wanted to touch base on this and kind of how I'd played around with it a little bit. I do want to play around with it some more, but it's going to take a lot of time just sitting down, going through it, you know, just seeing what kind of code you can possibly generate. But it is super interesting and I wasn't knocking it at the beginning. I'm just saying this is still in its infancy. It's probably going to be super powerful one day. 
So, you know, what it can do now, just take it with a grain of salt. It's not conscious or anything like that. You know that. It's just spitting out data from a huge data set and putting things together to help humans achieve tasks that are kind of difficult. So it's good. It's really like a really super powerful data assembler. You know, mixes, matches stuff, spits it out. You know, wham, bam. Thank you, man. There it is. That's really all I got to talk about. Just wanted to share this, how I've been playing around with it a little bit. Thought you might find it interesting, but that's really all I got for now. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and uh, definitely follow me on YouTube. Seems like a lot of my subscribers or people to watch the channel are not subscribers, so be sure to subscribe. I do appreciate it. And you guys have a good rest of the week. Thank you.